I invite Ibu Elim Sri Taba from the Chief from the Sinarmas. She is Chief Sustainability Officer PT Asia Pulp and Paper. Please, Ibu Elim. Thank you, Pak Bo. So, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, good afternoon, uh, all ladies and gentlemen in Jakarta who's watching us. So, uh, my name is Elim. I'm from uh, APP Sinarmas. Uh, would like to uh, share about how private sector role in sustainable pit management to support uh, our pitland management. Next. So we know that like what Pa Bowo said and everyone here understood about how important pitland uh, in our uh, pitland as a, a unique ecosystem. And uh, this is just highlight uh, our vision roadmap, uh, sustainability roadmap vision that uh, we put one of the pillar for us is uh, one of the main uh, important thing and included pitland uh, within. So uh, today I would like to explain uh, how uh, APP <coughs> uh, manage pitland within our uh, concession uh, and developing pit best management practice. So of course starts uh, with the inventory. Uh, we, we collect all the data using LIDAR since 2015 until 2019. And uh, we map all the uh, uh, concession area, especially in the pitland and we flew all the uh, more than 10,000 uh, kilometer uh, flow over East Sumatra and uh, West Kalimantan. And uh, what we did with this uh, data, of course, uh, our aim to design and uh, implement pit best management practice. Okay, maybe just uh, manual next. Yeah. Okay, so uh, after inventorize all the uh, pit land and uh, we we do the data to uh, to have a counter uh, analysis and then we identify where is the area that uh, we have to manage all the water uh, to do the water zoning area mapping, determine the water zoning area because of uh, we know that to manage plantation industry in uh, Indonesia. We are not only uh, responsible to manage the plantation, but also how can uh, manage side by side with the uh, conservation area. And this is uh, uh, how we want to uh, make sure that uh, while also maintaining the pitland as a unique ecosystem, uh, the forest conservation and also uh, have to manage the plantation as well. Next. So this is uh, uh, one of the sample, one of our concession in Jambi, how we uh, uh, <clears throat> map all the water zoning uh, with the colors uh, to make sure that we can uh, uh, develop canal blocking properly to uh, separate the, the level of the uh, ground level, water level within uh, our operation. Next. So of course doing this, uh, we together with uh, uh, advisor from uh, our Minister of Environment uh, team from the pitland. So we uh, decided to uh, develop or establish a canal blocking within the area. So since 2015, I think uh, we has been developed more than 5,000 canal blocks within all our uh, supplier concessions. Next. So uh, after that, like what Pa Askar explaining previously, so uh, we also put uh, the the water level measurement point uh, and how we also use CIMATAP uh, to report to our Minister of Environment uh, uh, to make sure that water level will meet the threshold and uh, compliance with the regulation. Next. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, tools uh, also important. So infrastructure to monitor, monitor the uh, water level. This is all the uh, plot manual and logger and uh, how we can uh, uh, put the, I think uh, we, we already put 
two, more than 256 uh, monitoring plots uh, within all the uh, our concession and uh, this is the the system that going on next Next. Okay, the, uh, this is the graph showing uh, from 2016 when we start uh, to rehabilitate and then showing the improvement after now and regularly has to be submitted to our uh, government. Next. This is the uh, plantation and uh, automate. This is the. We know that uh, this existing system, uh, we still have to think what kind of technology that maybe make uh, more efficiency within our uh, operation. So right now we try to uh, make a several pilot uh, together with our automation team in the company. What kind of system can maybe accelerate or um, to reduce the manual work on the work on the uh, field work. So we try to uh, use satellite and how we can connect with the dashboard internally to manage the water level. Next. And uh, since 2015, when we decided to uh, retire uh, 7,000 hectares into a landscape within our supplier concession, so we know that uh, this is the sample of how the natural regeneration coming back after uh, uh, <coughs> years this two picture after a year uh, we can see all the natural uh, this is explanation uh, just for information next next okay this is i want to show uh, previous few graphs uh, show the plantation this is the situation in the conservation when we retired uh, uh, two landscape this is one of the sample in tripupa south sumatra showing as well that we make sure that uh, the ground level is uh, in the zero level because of this is uh, we want to rehabilitate it to be a conservation area. So what what's happened? Uh, that's uh, the ground uh, water level ground, and now uh, we want to see how the forest can coming back, and uh, <clears throat> we know that uh, restoration on the former production area is quite challenging uh, because of we. Uh, some uh, acacia uh, growing back and then we want to uh, bring the the natural forest more that, that so that's why uh, we we work together with the scientists uh, work with the uh, natural environment research uh, institute uh, under nus and together with other uh, uh, scientists and i would like to show you uh, the the perspective from the uh, scientists the video maybe can yeah the the perspective uh, from this one of the scientists uh, from Delta X Delta Res, uh, researchers, uh, which is helping us to uh, also do some research uh, or study in this area. Can you play the video? <coughs> research program in PrEP benefits from earlier research and data collected on the site together with Deltaris, including a huge set of hydrological monitoring data in LiDAR. Based on that research, canals in the site were blocked, water levels were raised, and APP made the decision to retire part of the TPG concession, which is the study site of in PrEP. With this study, we contribute to science-based knowledge on peatland restoration through natural regeneration. We are looking for answers to questions such as what are the drivers of succession and what are limiting factors to vegetation emergence. The LIDAR data set collected allows a unique reconstruction of natural revegetation stages following clearing of acacia trees and re-wetting of a drained tropical peat. There are many challenges for restoration projects. Just planting trees is not enough. Finding sufficient ones, growing and planting the right seedlings for the specific site conditions is crucial, or restoration is doomed to fail. Hence, this project aims to have better understanding on successful restoration conditions. 
And restoration is a long process. It takes many years before you, before you see some results. This is a huge multidisciplinary study, integrating data and knowledge from large-scale remote sensing imagery up to DNA level of microbes in the soil. It's a first of its kind in many ways. It's the first on tropical peat, the first to study a large retired acacia plantation, first to create a lighter time series to monitor vegetation succession, the first to create a large-scale controlled experiment 72 plots over 3 hectares, which is roughly equivalent to 7 football fields. So we continue all the uh, research study. Uh, can you back to the slide? So because of, uh, we know that a lot of challenges to retire and uh, we invite all the uh, scientists to uh, continue the study and come back to us to provide the uh, what kind of methodology that's suitable uh, for the restoration on, on the peatland. So this is uh, also other uh, alter, uh, research that uh, we also try to find alternative species, especially a species that uh, uh, will suit to the uh, for peatland, especially in the ground water level. So the main challenge is, of course, uh, compared to the control acacia, the growth uh, and yield. So, uh, but uh, we also work uh, with our uh, research agency under Minister of Environment to uh, find or uh, treat it uh, using micro mycorrhiza and uh, how the growth compare with the uh, control one. Next. So, uh, of course, commodity also in, uh, important here. So, working together with our partner, uh, see, we also uh, include community uh, uh, by providing them uh, capacity building. They will they develop established nursery area and they, they will provide us the uh, natural species to be used for the restoration uh, in the restoration area. Next. I think that's it. Uh, the the key of the uh, I think develop the pit best management practice here is is the collaboration is really important uh, between uh, private sector uh, from the government, other stakeholders, and also community because of uh, this is like a long term and continuous improvement process. And then we need to find the best way how we went how we protect our pit land and do some restoration in some area that need to be protected. Thank you. Uh, th this is not only connecting sky to soil, but also connecting from regulator to private sector. This is a, a good example how we work together to control our pit ecosystem.